Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about routines. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, as a computer programmer, do you have a routine before you start to code? Yes, I do. Um, so usually the thing that I do is that before I start coding, I create a like a I look at the story card that I'm going to pick up. I pick up the card and then I copy paste uh, the ID, like the card ID of the of the card, and then I create a feature a, a feature branch or a story branch that includes that commit uh, or sorry that uh, that ID in the branch name. The reason why I like to do that is because after a while, like it's hard if you just come up with new names. It's sort of like in the horse racing where you have all these funky looking, uh, funky sounding names for the horses. When there you have enough horses, you it's it becomes difficult for you to have a serious name for everything. It's the same thing with story cards. So you you're going to ship hundreds and hundreds of features. So for me, the the thing that I care about is not my branch name uh, necessarily. I care about having a reference. To to the story card, so I know that that branch is connected to that specific story card. That's why I use the ID for included in the name of my branch. So that's the first thing. And then I go and take a look at the story card itself, and I start looking through the story card and look if I can see acceptance criteria. What am I supposed to be doing here? So I read through the card as best as I can. Usually you will find that the cards are very poorly written. Usually people don't know how to write good story cards. There are usually no acceptance criteria. So before I start I make sure that I have some type of acceptance criteria because it's important for me to know what I'm supposed to be building. And then I, so I have a conversation with the product owner or whoever made the story just to sort of make sure that I know what to do. What to do. And, and a, a methodology, that, a method to, to do this that I enjoy quite, uh, that I like to use is to basically see if I can explain to the person what I think is going to be done in my own words and then have them correct me if I'm wrong. So I usually tell tell my product manager from the story card I'm not 100% sure what's going to happen so I think that I'm supposed to be doing this, that and that. Is that correct? And when we finally arrive to a consensus on what is correct I write down a bullet list of uh, to-dos in my story card. Uh, usually the way I do that is just to append to the description, not to the description itself, but to the a comment section or add it to the acceptance criteria, just a bullet point, which are going to be the mesh benchmarks that I use for when the system is done. So I write one point saying that uh, I should, there should be unit tests, uh, I should have created this feature, it should have this specific model, it should have this specific endpoint, it should do this, that, you know, just a checklist basically of the things that I'm going to share if I've done by the end of this story because I know that if it's a long-running story or if I do a lot of other stuff with context switching and so forth I need to be able to get back into the same headspace I was when I was working actively on it and the best way to do that is to do a to-do list so you make sure that you can remember what you have done and what you haven't done and so whenever I do one thing of the thing uh, like if I complete some task and I have to leave it half finished I can cross out the things I've already taken care of and then move on to the rest of the list and sometimes I have to go through this many times as say scope creep and things like that become a reality and I might just append things to the to the to-do list uh, in the card and it's also a nice thing uh, I've heard, gotten some credit for that or uh, pats on the back from my product managers because they really like that because that way they can see how I progressed like they can see what's done and what's not done and they really like that you can use tasks card as well but I usually just use the to-do list and then once that's done I, st uh, I take a look at uh, if it's a completely fresh feature it's a different story but usually it's not usually you're dealing with some type of existing code already and what I do then is that I take a look at the surrounding code I go to the code that is most adjacent or like where the area of the code where I need to make the updates or create the new co new function or component or whatever it might be and then I start looking and I start to try to figure out how it's working today a little bit. I'm not the whole code but it's just the area that I'm going to touch and then I have to because I have to arrive at a decision here. So I think I think about all right. Do I have enough time? If there's some type of legacy or something like that, uh, can I fix that? Or is the code already in a pretty decent state? So it's easy for me to just append code. That's the question I try to answer for myself. Am I going to append function, feature functionality to this component, 
or do I need to isolate and modularize this so that I can do that in a safe manner? Let me explain that a little bit. So if my core or the person who wrote the code before me has done a good job, then the code should feel fairly straightforward for me to just append new functionality to. In other words, just add software. And if I do, can do that, then I can start working. If I realize that actually it's difficult for me to fit in, like it doesn't, like the interfaces are not correct or the abstractions are not really a good fit for the new thing that I'm going to build, then I start asking myself, all right, how do I make sure that this new piece of functionality becomes like a, I have this analogy I like to use, if I, each piece of feature, each piece of functionality I want to add to my software is like adding a brick to a, uh, to a brick road. And for it to fit nice and nicely, it has it depends on the previous bricks that have been laid. So if the previous bricks are in kind of weird, a weird shape, the road is not going to get smooth if I put in another brick. So I have to figure out, can I do something tactical here? Can I do a little bit of boy scouting or something like that? How can I make sure that this new thing I'm going to add fits nicely into the whole thing that I'm trying to build so that the road becomes smooth? And that's the that's the thing that I have a really hard long hard think about. Sometimes a little bit of refactoring is not difficult, so I can create a nice fit. It doesn't mean that I refactor the whole system. It's just the area that I'm touching so that my new feature will fit in well. And then once I have an answer to that, if for example I can refactor a little bit, I usually try to th make sure that I create. I, I always do this basically, guys. If I'm adding new code, I start by thinking about how can I can I make this into a modular a module of some sort? Because what's very nice about that is that uh, if you create a separate module for whatever you're going to do, like uh, a UI component or something like a class or whatever, and you just finish you, the as I like to call it when you design your in, your interfaces from the inside out then you don't have to worry so much about what the remaining code around everything does because you can create an abstraction that basically just fits into any context uh, because it doesn't know, it doesn't assume anything about the state of the system. It's just going to take in some parameters or something like that and produce some type of value. This sounds very fluffy, but the idea is very simple. Usually, I, if uh, I'm doing uh, something the way it's say, Take, let's take a simple example, UI work. If I'm doing something like a visual component or something like that, rather than just take the existing code and just dump in new files and then just add pen them to the overall page I'm working on, I create a separate directory where my new piece of functionality is going to live in, my new module. And then I finish up the visual component, like maybe I'm creating a dialogue or something like that. And then I create a dialogue that I name something something, I create it in a clean way, it doesn't actually, like, it's not designed to just fit on this specific page, it's just designed in a generic fashion where it will fit on that page and it will fit there very nicely based on the current requirements, but in theory you could have put that on any page or so forth. I'm not trying to be a generalist, I'm not trying to generalize things, I'm trying to isolate the new thing that I'm trying to add from the overall set of code that I'm dealing with because by modular making it into a module rather than just adding it into the rest of the code base I decrease the coupling between the, the my new thing and the rest of the system and then when I have it working like you visually or like it looks nice and so forth or if it's a class or so forth I can know it fills all the requirements I need then I try to fit it into the remainder set of code like the, the appended to the system uh, or to the area that I'm supposed to add it to uh, by doing this approach, it's easy for me to just remove the module if I wanted to. It's also isolated, which means that it doesn't, you know, if I have a legacy system and I can't refactor, I have to do this really quickly, then it's super easy for me to deal with. It's almost like microservices. It's easier for me to create a microservice that does something specific than it is for me to learn a whole monolith so I can append that functionality into the overall code base. That's usually the way that I approach it. So what I want you to take away from this is that my little ritual that I use before I start coding is number one, I always create a story branch or a feature branch uh, that is has the ID of the card that I need to um, use uh, the story card on the Kanban board. Uh, the reason is very simple, I want to be able to connect the two. It's the same thing when I do pull requests, I try to connect them somehow so I know that if I am on that pull request, I know that it's that card. If I'm on the card, I know that it's that pull, uh, pull request that I'm going to check. Then I go to the story card, I make sure that I understand it, I make sure that I create a little to-do list of checks that I'm going to do by the end before, like I always do that when I feel like I'm finished and I'm ready to do the pull uh, merge request. 
uh, or pull request I push that and like before I ask for feedback I make sure that I check off uh, all the items on that list that I've done everything I'm supposed to be doing and then finally before I start working I start to look at the surrounding code and try to evaluate is the code in a good enough state that I can just add my functionality or do I ha should I isolate my code it's usually the case that I have to do that into a separate directory so I build my part of the feature and then I try to lift it into the feature that I hope that that makes sense to you you don't start working with the existing code you start with the thing that you're supposed to be doing create that and then you fit it in like a Lego br br like a brick in a road or something like that and if it fits I'm happy if I might have to sh uh, do some refactoring or boy scouting on the existing code I will do that just so that things fit but that is on a case-by-case -case basis have a great day